Hey guys, Ray Garrison here. You're in my studio, Electric Rooster in Van Nuys, California. Today, I'm gonna walk you through the song Leeches I produced with Crazy Town and myself and show you guys how we started it and how it ended up the way it is. Let's go. Okay, here's how the song started. So, let me fix this. Oh, that's ugly as butt. Alright, that's fine, I'll move. Okay, so, that sounds terrible, um, but I'm just gonna be transparent with you guys. This is uh, how I start songs, is I kind of mumble ideas. Um, and it usually sounds bad, but uh, so what ended up happening was, is um, I took this vocal and kept it, I keep losing friends like we're at war. and then I got rid of those lyrics and made the shortest verse possible, not on purpose to make it short, but just to um, use the good parts. Don't wanna be let down no more. I think that was the final take, um, cause there was a rawness um, about that. So I'm pretty sure this song started with this uh, bass line. I like to start with a bass line, it kinda gives me a foundation of what my chords are gonna do. So um, this was made with a Prophet X, found a cool patch. Um, yeah, so I started with the bass, the bass chords, and then I think I found some vocal chops here from Splice. Let's see, I tuned it, formented it. Um, this actually didn't make the final version of the record, so like, you know, but it helped with inspiration of uh, writing. Oh, you know what? And then. I did the the anal thing, <laughs> being anal about producing, um, and I recorded my own vocal chops matching the loop that I started with, so it was original, you know. And then that's mine. If you want to see like what it sounded like untreated. <laughs> Be my guest. And that's pitched up. So if we like, I don't know, put it kind of close to normal. Yeah, I went, oh, oh, oh. Um, and that's it. Apple Z into oblivion. Get back to where we were. First. Okay, I used a little uh, drum loop from Splice to get a vibe on the verse. Um, and then I played guitar with my, it's probably my SG. Um, I recorded it with the Kemper. I don't know, it might have been my Strat. Uh, anyways, I use the AC30 sound, and then just put a, a 16th note delay, which I don't do very often, but I did in this song. Um, EQ'd it because I wanted to drake -ify it. <laughs> That's a term me and my friends use. We don't know, try to sound like Drake, but the way that him and Forty and his team uh, wash out the sounds to make room for the vocal is cool. So um, that's kind of what I was going for, is like a washed out underwater sound. A lot of times I'll pitch it down. Um, some reverb, and then once again, hardcore filter just to make sure it was super washed out um, and then here's an electric piano where I elaborated the chords you know 
There's some good uses of seventh chords in there. What not? Um, that sound like I don't even know if you hear it or if it's in the final version. It's not really that important. But I'm a huge fan of these basses, like I showed you in the intro. They just make me happy. Okay, I think that's it for the verse. Um, and then. I don't. Yeah, this is completely changed. And then. We're gonna go into the final session after this, but I just wanted to show you how it started. Yeah, so I kept my drone bass in there just to give me the feeling, but then I recorded a live bass. I have a P bass. Um, so I keep getting out of frame. Um, yeah, then I put in my P bass into the Kemper, two rhythm guitars, it's in, uh, the tuning is in B. <laughs> I use the PV sound, and PV amp. And then um, the drums I programmed for at first with uh, this sick plugin. Here's a little tip for you guys, you guys want good drum sounds with a MIDI? With the MIDI, <laughs> with MIDI, um, this one get wonder. There you go. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Satanic holiday, whatever it is you celebrate. Um, and yeah, that was where the song began. All right, now we are in. I think the near final demo session of the song. So what I did was I made the first demo in Ableton and then I went into the studio with Keith Armstrong and recorded live drums on the song. And from there on, I moved the session to Pro Tools because Pro Tools is really good with um, lots of live audio like drums, um, for example, for like using Beat Detective to line it to line up the drums on time with the grid and to do sample replacing with like the tab to transient and all that stuff. And yeah, so this is the last session before I exported it to Pro Tools. Um, and before it was sent to Crazy Town. This is the version that was sent to Crazy Town to Shifty, Seth. And um, this is the version he heard that uh, made him want to get on the song, which was cool. Actually, yeah, I forgot there was a verse to... Okay, so as you can hear, there's lots of terribleness still in the demo. <laughs> what can I say? It is what it is. You know, you gotta finesse these things until they're great. And um, that's where working with Crazy Town was dope because it Shifty has a dope vision and really pushed me to my limit or 
beyond, you know, finding that there maybe wasn't a limit where I thought there was. And, um, and we really made every part the best we thought we could. So, um, so yeah, in this version, um, I really just introduced the new vocals and probably some mixing and the rough part for the breakdown. Yeah, eventually, originally I was going for like a trappy part of the breakdown. And then, oh yeah. Then there's the solo breakdown. I basically just followed the vocal melody and then veered off a little bit for the guitar solo. I forgot about that. So yeah, that's, I mean, there's nothing really too fancy added to this. Um, Yeah, I was trying some like crazy electronic um, breakdown stuff in the beginning. I think it was uh, after, yeah, I remember what happened. So this was my rough, this was after, like right after I recorded the chorus and I was like, oh, okay, like now it's turning into a song. Like I have a chorus, I have a verse, pre-chorus, even had a verse two. Um, obviously there was still a lot left to do, and I think I might have tightened it up a little bit more before I sent it out. But, yeah, um, that was like the, the rough blueprint for the song. And, um, from there, we went into Pro Tools. Alright, now we're in the Master Pro Tools se session. And um, as you can see, it's massive with a lot of tracks. I don't even know how many, but a lot. Let's start at the top. Here, well, never mind. Let's not start at the top. Let's look at these groups first. So I have everything going to groups before the master. So um, we're going to start with drums, and you'll see drums right here. Of the effects muted. Um, those are mainly vocal effects. Um, but yeah, let's go to the drums. So um, Tosh played drums on this song and he recorded it and sent them to me and then I added some samples on top of them uh, but Jim Pender who mixed it ended up using his own samples Pender's amazing um, so let's get into it so the drums don't start on this till the chorus I have some programming drums leading up to it but we'll start with the real drums So, yeah, I used some uh, samples from, can't remember his name, <laughs> uh, Alon Rubin, the uh, drummer from Nine Inch Nails. Um, they're on Splice, they're sick. Um, if I mute them, you can hear the drums pretty raw. I, I, uh, I took off some of my mixing when I sent it off to Pinder so he could uh, do his thing to it, but... Um, for the demo and for listening, not really a demo, but for the rough mix, uh, I had my samples in it. So um, it's heavy, heavy on the samples. You know, I come from making beats, so I like fat drums. Um, let's see. Let's start with the kick. On the kick, um, yeah, I started with uh, this preset on the SSL. Um, I just went through the different bass drum presets and thought this one sounded good and then I EQ'd it some more. Um, you can see there's a boost at the top end, around like 11, 12 hertz, uh, 3K, a cut where there was some mud around 600 to get rid some of the boxy sound. Some compression. And that's on the kick sample. So I definitely, uh, 
And then here you can see I did my own EQing like crazy. Um, I just tried to make up where I thought it was lacking frequency range for the vibe of the song. And um, yeah, did a lot of a lot of stuff here. I boosted some 110 to get a little of like the chest punch and then some low end for the sub. Took out a bunch of high. I didn't need that much high um, because I had a lot of volume on the kick and I wanted to feel more of the roundness. And then I also had the um, two other kick mics. One actually, I think. Are we using both? Yeah, we're using one. One's a duplicate, I don't know why. But um, looking at it. I left it raw. I think I did have some stuff on it, but um, I just took it off knowing that Pender was gonna redo it anyways. Um, so yeah, together. The real one just kind of adds uh, some dynamic. And as you can see, if I take off the automation here, I went in and um, adjusted the volume. Or did I? No, I didn't. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I adjusted the gain to match the real kick um, dynamics, so it felt real. So like, I kind of just blew up the waveform, and you know, you can see this one's lower. So I dumped that one. That one's a little bit warmer, hotter. So I duck that one a little bit less and yeah and then I had this transient master um I think I saw like Skrillex using this just to give it some more attack and punch um all right let's move to the snare to the snare we take everything out love the snare pretty natural I did some tuning uh to make the key of the song resonate it's in G sharp minor and then very light compression um and some EQs I always bu uh, boost around like 150 to 250 to get the thud of the snare it's really important to me you know if I exaggerate it's that part of the set of the snare uh the bottom I think I did some stuff to it, but I took it off again for mixing, so not a whole lot though. Um, and then the, the sample, again, some attack, and this one had some good thud, but I wanted some more snap. I went fucking crazy with it and really boosted the top to give it some sizzle. And right now the mastering's off on this song and um, the mastering, <clears throat> I really used to shape the tone of my rough mix so it sounds extra bare. Um, we'll look at the master bus last just to see what I was doing. But yeah, um, and then I did some sample replacing on the toms and then sent them to a group with some more EQ, some more EQ. Um, no preset on this one, I just dialed in where I thought it was needed. That's got the samples and the regular toms going to the bus. And then, um, yeah, hi-hat. You know. Overhead. Pulled out some boxiness and some resonances. Um, I had this on it originally, but I think I muted that for mixing. Um, same with the rooms. I had some processing on it. Again, I took it off to let Pinder do his thing. I left some on here on the aux. It's really quiet. And then the rooms and like the overheads and then the samples are going to this drum, ver drum verb channel, which is really great. Um, it's kind of hard to. You kind of hear it, it gives it that like uh, big room stadium space. Um, Keith Armstrong taught me to use this. It's a 
just a verb classic. It's uh, Chris Lord Algie's preset for a snare, but I use it for all the drums. It's um, based off a real model. I forget what brand makes it, but it's um, on here. It's the FG2000. So, I mean, that's pretty much it for the drums. There's some programming, some 808s um, on the bridge. They're actually down here. Probably because I redid them so many times, and this is the last version I did at the end. I sent him a process version with mine, which just kind of adds some distortion harmonics, and then I gave him a, a completely clean version. And then, yeah, there's those boom boom clap samples. I think there are a lot of them are cashmere samples. Um. Yeah, let's go. On, let's move on. So then we got guitars. A lot of them are the guitars from the demo. Um, this is uh, yeah, my guitar I played from the demo. And then um, the chorus guitars we had DJ from Super Creep. So the bass player and drummer and guitar player, um, additional guitar player on this are on a band called Super Creep together. They're really dope. Go check them out. He brought over his baritone guitar, and um, since it goes to a low B, instead of tuning my standard guitar and using that, we used his baritone guitar. And it sounded so dope, I got my own baritone guitar. Um, yeah, and now the rhythm sound like this. I didn't even do any processing on those, just because I knew it was gonna be um, mixed. So I just left it raw. Um, and then, yeah, the super creep guys played over the bridge and made it super, super dope and heavy. And then, um, yeah, then we left. And then we went back to using my demo rhythm guitars for the guitar solo, double time. which is a regular guitar tuned down to drop B. You can tell it sounds a little bit like flimsier than a baritone guitar, but it still, you know, worked, got the job done. No one, no one said anything. And then we, yeah, I think we kept my original solo, I believe, from um, the demo. I, might, I may have added a couple parts to it, but I think it's the original. And then we have um, Hazma and me on the bass. I played, we kept my pre-chorus because it was very simple and clean and it already sounded good. There's some processing on there I, I dialed in. I don't know what that was. Um, I added some warmth. I love a good warm bass, you know. Um, yeah. And then Hazma shredded the chorus. Stuff I would never do on a bass. That's, that's what's cool, man. Like, you know, I wrote most of these parts by myself, the, the originals, and then, you know, bring in people that are really that's really specialized and good at their instrument and have them play it because like why not it's gonna sound better like I'm not one of those people that has to play everything myself and like for whatever reason like I want the best sound and the biggest sound so like whenever I can if there's someone that can play better or add more or just has a cool different tone like I welcome it because in the end like I just want the best song possible so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the bass. Uh, his breakdown also on the bridge is really sick. Um, and then we got synth bass. I probably took out the low end. Yeah, I took the, all right, so here you can see I took out the side information and the lows and then boosted it 
um, and where in the highs. So like, cause the regular bass guitar is sitting in the middle. Um, and on this one, I kind of wanted it to surround it like a pad, but not get in the way too much. Right, Migo? Um, so yeah, that's the synth bass. Let's keep looking at synths. You know, a lot of the synth work was done in the beginning of the song. <laughs> like, that's in the breakdown. You barely hear it, but you know, it's in there probably somewhere. And then what's this? We got a little effects. Oh yeah. You know, I had to have my, I had to bring in my, my EDM days, you know, just to make it rise and feel crazy, you know. Um, and then there's the electric piano, the vibe. I think this is what I wrote, like the, this is what I wrote the, the lyrics over, the beginning lyrics for my verse. Um... Yeah, that's in the in the breakdown, very tucked. Um just to give it some movement. And yeah, then there's the choirs. Um yeah, pretty self explanatory. To give it an epic feel. Let's see, what's the silent here? That doubles the melody. I like to do that, just, um, you know, add epicness to what's already happening musically. Um, there's this little, uh, what's this little bass fill we got here? Oh yeah, that's going out of the bridge into the solo. Just some glitchy stuff. Also a reverse guitar thing there. Also, yeah, more glitchy stuff. I like glitchy stuff. Vocals are muted right now, obviously. We'll get to those. Um, Alright, what's this silent thing? Oh yeah, we already did that. Alright, Fuzz Fill. This is in Shifty's verse. Um, yeah, uh, uh, we, we wanted to do something really cool for Shifty's verse. Like, make you go like, wait, whoa. Like, switch up. So, did something like cool. Um programming uh, and make it a little hip hop -ier. and one of my favorite things about working with Pinder is if you ask him nicely sometimes he might uh, touch up and add some programming too so um, you can hear hear this and then hear the final version and hear like what he did with it um, I always love it when he does that it makes me excited um, but yeah let's hear what we sent him so we sent him yeah some cool glitchy stuff Um, I like futuristic sounding stuff, so I try to I try to go futuristic as much as possible. Sometimes I get um, too carried away, or people people feel too out of space, so I tone it down. But I think we found a good heavy medium in this one. Just some lower vocal chops. Yeah, some of the ones from the old intro. Recycle, like the recycle parts. Um, let's backtrack and check these strings out. Some epicness behind the chorus. You know, just adds. Adds epic. Got I love epic. So epic stuff. Shout out to Epic too. From Crazy Town. Um. All right. Yeah. These are the samples from Shifty's verse. Very simple. He wanted kind of like an old school vibe. Um. And mine. I did this. I mixed this kick and bass together in Ableton. Um. And then imp and then exported them as one because I processed them together. I probably did some uh, saturation and then some levels of clipping, some layers of clipping. Yeah, you can hear there's a horn, a bass. There's probably a few different sounds all merged into this take. 
Um, and then, yeah, some of the high perks. Some cool, simple stuff. So it's cool. It's like an old school style S beat, but uh, with some like um, futuristic vibes. Happy medium between both. And then here's all my effects. Impacts to add epicness, sub drops. You know, just really simple stuff, really. Um, Additional crashes, like to kind of add splashes, you know. Blank stuff. Yeah, more splashes. Um, and then I got a tape stop in here. All right, and then my boy Rick One, also from Crazy Town, did a, a pass of DJ Scratches, which is really cool. Um, sick, sick stuff. Yeah, and then uh, vocals. Shit, son of vocals. Um, I did unmix them a little bit too because I knew that, again, Pender is going to do his own things and I don't know if he had the same plugins. But uh, yeah, I think we ended up using my demo for the verse. My demo vocal. I, keep losing friends like we're at war. I don't remember being that processed. I definitely didn't use that in the final. Um, I keep losing friends like we're at war. Don't wanna be let down no more. Yeah, um, simple. And then I think I re-recorded all the other parts. Friends turn to balls. Oh yeah, I have the effects off. Yeah. I just wanna be alone. Throw a delay on the yeah. Yeah, if you don't know what a throw delay is, it's when you just make a new track and have the wetness of the delay at uh, 100%. So whatever is on that track is just going to be all delay. You won't hear any of the original. Um, very simple. I'm trying to find it to show you. Um, most of you probably know what that is, though. So, Oh, yeah, I printed it already. So, um, But, yeah, here it is. Down. Um, and then going in, you could hear a reverse reverb. So I took a little chunk of the next section, added a long reverb tail, printed it, it, printed it, printed it, and then cut off the original sound. So it was just the reverb tail and reversed it. Bam. That's always a great trick. It always just makes the section coming in just so delicious. Um, all right, let's check out the layers. Um, we've got lots of doubles. No auto tune on the middle one, uh, just to create some extra like phasing doubled soundness. Um, some of these are probably embarrassing, <laughs> but uh, I could take it or leave it now. Yeah, you know, like some of them aren't perfect, but like, you know, it didn't stick out to me when listening to it as a whole. So I like to work fast. So like if it didn't bother me when I was listening to this song, and then I just thought that's how it was.
then we have shit these layers, which are much louder. I don't know why they're quiet on this version, but they uh, they take over the lead parts for the, his parts. Those are like the ad libs. Yep, yeah, and shifty layers. There's some he here's like a my throat delay tracks. That's a um. This isn't how I normally do it. This one has a bunch of effects. I think it originally was a throw delay and then it ended up just being an effect track. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's like kind of just a background kind of vocal chop thing. It's not supposed to be like a prominent thing. And then Hazma, boy do I love Hazma scream. This shit is money. <laughs> Hear weird shit outside. I fucking love it. I love Hazma. So dope. So fucking dope. Um, and then we doubled it, put it on the left and right, his screams. Sorry if I'm just breezing through this, but I didn't want to make like a, a two hour video. If you guys want the two hour full extended video, let me know. But this is already like 30 minutes and I definitely don't want to go past 30. So let's try to wrap it up. Um, yeah, then there's a bunch of buses. Uh, I had this L Ray compressor, which I use on all vocals almost. It's an amazing compressor. Um, I guess it's kind of like the CL1B. Um, I'm not really like a, a huge nerd with it. I'm like just enough nerd to like have fun with it, but I can't tell you like what kind of like wiring it's based off of a real compressor, you know? Um, and yeah, like there's so much shit in here. It's like, I'm just trying to get to the important stuff. This is the master vocal bus. Um, it just has some compression, a boost in the top end around seven hertz, and then soothe the kind of the invisible deesser. Like that. That's great. Reverb, bunch of different stuff. Deverb, capital chambers, fun. Uh, the black hole for like really long effects, um, and then just like you know half note delay, H delay, quarter note, and then yeah. Um, and then, you know, I have all my bus processing down here, um, to just shape the tone. And then let's see if I can get away with a master. Uh, a lot of my mix is in the master. Actually, I learned from Luca Pretolesi to kind of start your mix on the master bus and get the levels at like the right level. And then use these assortment of plugins to calm down the tone. I don't know if it's gonna play because it's not, session's so big. Um, but we'll go for it. But you can hear the difference in mix. Yeah, it won't even play, because I'm recording. Um, I, I could probably take some stuff off. Unfortunately, all that stuff's like the tone and the source. And two of these are Lucas plugins. Luca Pertolesi, amazing mixer master. And this is the bane of my existence. That's the bane of my existence, that the computer not keeping up. Especially when I have a Mac Pro with 96 gigs of RAM. Should work, but it doesn't all the time. Be alone. Boom, and there you have it. That was how we made leashes from the rough draft to the demo to the final version we set to mix. Um, and it was a, uh, it was really fun. Big shout out to everyone involved. Uh, Crazy Town um, and Shifty Seth. Um, we, 
me and him spent a long time working on this song together. There was many sessions. Um, we spent tidying it up and making it what it is now. And um, <clears throat> big shout out to all the other guys. Big shout out to the guys at Super Creep that came along and played. Uh, Hasma, DJ Tosh. These guys are awesome. Go check out their band. Um, the Riders, uh, Mike Rebel, um, and who else? Uh, Jim Pender for mixing it. Jim killed it. Big shout out to Black Seventeen, Brian over there, the label that we released it with, um, and Alec and Roy. And yeah, uh, it was it was a very fun process, and I'm so happy it's out. And be sure to look out for the music video. Yeah.